So, um, continuing on with sliding window protocol, so whenever an acknowledgement arrives, um, we have a look to see which that acknowledgement is, uh, and if it's newer than the one that we had as the LAR, we can advance the LAR toward the right. And so that means that the, uh, the that point, uh, if we go back uh, and look at that, oops. So if we advance the LAR, the end point that's still within the, S, uh, the sliding window size will also advance by the same amount. So then we can keep sending frames and advancing our LFS um, to match. And we still need to have the, uh, uh, the timeouts uh, for frames that haven't been received. Um, and this then leads into an issue is that the sender has to be willing to buffer enough frames to completely fill the, uh, the sliding window size. And the reason for that is that it may be asked to retransmit any of those frames because it hasn't had an acknowledgement for any of those frames yet. So it has to be willing to buffer all of those frames. Uh, on modern systems with gigabytes of RAM, this is usually not a problem. Uh, back in the, uh, the bad old days when computer networks were in their infancy in the 60s through to 80s, uh, systems were often very constrained with their memory and might only have you know, the order of 64 kilobytes of RAM, uh, in which case being willing to buffer any one kilobyte frames at all, uh, in fact, was um, uh, a considerable cost that had to be weighed up carefully. Now, on the receiving side, uh, the receiver needs to also keep track of their receiving window size. So this is the upper bound on the number of frames that it will keep track of that have arrived out of order. Um, so much as the sender has to keep <coughs> be willing to be able to resend frames uh, that are in the window, the receiver needs to be willing to receive frames up to the length of the window that have arrived in the wrong order and so can't be released into the correct order until the older ones have come. So the, uh, the other two variables it needs to keep track of is the last frame received. So this is the sequence number of the last frame that was received. Um, and it also needs to keep track of the largest acceptable frame. So this will be um, the LFR plus the length of the receive window side. So again, this is very much mirroring what's happening on the transmit side, except now we're keeping track of the, uh, the last frame received, uh, which is the last in order frame that it was able to dispatch, and then the receive window size, and then the largest acceptable frame number uh, is bounded by that. So it might receive these in any arbitrary order, but as soon as it receives um, the sequence number LFR plus one, it knows it can release it and advance the LFR by one, advance the LAF by one, uh, and still keep within that constraint of the receive window size. So on the receive side, uh, whenever the receiver receives a frame, it first has to check whether the sequence number is within the LFR and the LAF interval within that window, that sliding window. If it's not, it needs to discard it. Um, if it is, it needs to accept it and work out whether or not it needs to send uh, an acknowledgement. So what it is typically done is you keep track of the largest sequence number that has not yet been acknowledged, but where all of the frames leading up to that point have been received. Uh, so then the receiver can say, I have received all frames up to sequence number, whatever that is, uh, and we'll send that out. So if frames arrive out of order, that won't advance, but as soon as a hole is filled in in that, that enables the LFR uh, to advance, then the sequence number to act by definition will also have increased but may not increase just by to where the hole is, it might increase to some number of frames after that uh, based on whether those frames have all been received or not. So if, for example, we have the, the last frame received is number five and the received window size is four, then the last frame, uh, sorry, so that means that that's the last frame which is acknowledged was number five. That means that the largest acceptable frame is five plus four, which is nine. So now if frames seven and nine arrive, they're not the next frames in order. Frame six hasn't been arrived, uh, hasn't been sent. Sorry, hasn't, hasn't been received by the receiver. Uh, so that means that we have to buffer seven and eight. 
So we're not going to send an ACK. As soon as frame six arrives, we've now filled in six, but we also have seven and eight in order. So we can acknowledge just once, we just acknowledge frame eight. And that implies that frame six and seven have received, been received as well. So we don't have to send an ACK for every frame. Um, and we can then advance the LFR to eight and advance the LAF uh, to being uh, eight plus four, which is now 12. So if we think then about some of the challenges for sliding window uh, protocol, um, there are a few that need to be dealt with. Obviously, this is still a lot better than just sending one frame and waiting for the round trip time, especially if the bandwidth delay product is very large, uh, which is quite a, a common situation these days. Um, pardon me. Um, if a timeout occurs, then the data throughput will necessarily drop for a little while because the sender hasn't been able to advance this window during that time. Um, and it would be nice if we were able to, uh, to deal with that. Um, and when packet loss occurs, uh, the pipeline doesn't stay completely full. It takes some time to realize that the packet was lost um, and to then uh, respond to that. And the longer it takes to notice whether the packet has been lost or not, uh, the worse this problem comes and the lower the effective throughput. Um, so there's a number of ways that this can be uh, addressed. So we can do a negative acknowledgement um, where we actually acknowledge uh, where we've realized that a frame hasn't been received, uh, or we can do additional or selective acknowledgement. And we'll talk about these uh, in the next video.